Hi, welcome to my channel. Now, those of you who have been with me for a while would recognize this. Yes, it's the Airsoft Yugo M70 Quad Reel. I have used this before. On that YouTube, I mounted this higher and therefore all the mods were done to the lower part and nothing was done to the upper part. But because this has a thicker barrel, I will be mounting this lower, therefore less mod on the lower part and more mod to the upper part. Now the advantage of that is that should your optic fail, you won't have to remove the upper part. You will just remove the optic and continue to use the iron. So why don't we begin? Why don't we begin with the lower part? Okay. You need to center punch two spots. Both are 18 millimeter from the edge. One's right there, and the other one's right there. Okay. This one's right here. Both are 18 millimeter from the edge, front and back. Center punch it. This one, the back one, you're going to be drilling 6 millimeter because it has to accommodate an M6 by 0.75. Okay. And the front 5 millimeter, you need to accommodate a screw which is a 10 32 by 3 inch long. Okay, so you need to accommodate that. Now, should you not have metric drill, then the back is a, you can use a 1564, and for the front, you can use 3 16 okay? You could do that. Actually, that's what I'm going to be using. So, but first, after you um, punched it, center punched it, you need to do a little bit of filing of the inside. If you see this, it has a bridge here, a curved bridge, and a curved bridge in the front. You need to file the edges inside a little bit. Okay, inside here and inside there, in the front, inside there, inside there. And you need to file that is because right now the the barrel block is only about a couple of millimeter and it's not actually touching this thing and therefore when you basically when you screw this in it's going to tend to rock and if you were to file this and also need this to go a little higher by filing this a bit just remove about one one and a half millimeter now I need to do to the all four sides one there, two here, one in the back there. So I'll be back. Okay, all four uh, parts are done. And uh, let's see um, if the back part of the uh, barrel block is touching this part and uh, okay now that I put the rail uh, on I um, uh, it still pivots a bit so that basically means I haven't taken off enough and it shouldn't be pivoting so I need to uh, grind some more off Okay, so let's put this back in. Okay, that's um, I did I did go back and sand it some more and um, this is what it looks like. A little bit more than uh, I thought it needed. And, um, but be careful not to uh, cut right through. You need the extra support. If you cut right through, then this will 
if you over tighten this will spread out so you need that okay but now you can see now let's test it out see if I was successful and uh, <clears throat> I'm pressing the back and it's not pivoting that's exactly what I've been looking for I wanted to t touch the barrel block and I don't want this to pivot okay so that was good so the next thing I'm going to do is to drill a uh, six millimeter or a six no or a 15 by 64 I'm going to use the Imperial 15 by 64 drill and in the front I'm going to use a 316 drill so um, okay let's see let me put this down make sure it's nice and center and it is Okay. Yep, it's pretty close to the center. I'm going to try to see if that fits. And it does fit. Okay, so I'm going to see if it uh, fits into the rifle. Now, when I ordered this bolt, it was a little bit longer because I didn't know how high it's going to be. So obviously, I'm going to have to cut this bolt later. Okay, I got an Allen wrench and I screwed this in. And the bolt is a little bit uh, long. Okay, now I'm ready to drill the front hole. And I'm using a 3 16th drill bit. I'm going to make sure I'm centered. I am. I am. Check it again. I still am centered, so I don't have to actually move it around. Okay. <clears throat> Looks good. And let's see, yep, it looks pretty centered. Front. And yep. It's a little snug, but that's the that it does go in. Now the next thing I have to do with this three-inch uh, bolt screw is uh, take the head off. Now to do that, make sure you put the uh, screws in to protect the thread. I mean, put the uh, nuts in, and you're gonna put a whole bunch of them. So otherwise, you're gonna damage the thread. Okay head is off okay so that's uh, heads off I'm gonna use the, the back of the uh, cutter just to round off the, uh, the sharp edges yeah just to round it off remove the sharp uh, edges off okay I'm on my kitchen stove and i am got uh, two two half inch uh, chip rock and um, the reason why I'm over my stove is because I want to use the hood fan so it doesn't uh, set off any uh, sprinkler system and um, so here I am I just uh, move these two nuts close to the marker that I've marked and I'm gonna screw to protect the thread I'm just gonna Screw it like right to it, and now the reason why I have these two nuts up here is that because I'm gonna be have I'm gonna be hitting 
I don't want to hit the thread, otherwise I'll be damaging the thread. After I heat this uh, screw up, I'll be pounding it down. So uh, why don't we start? And that's it. To remove the three rivets uh, from the top handguard, three rivets uh, here on the bottom, I'm going to use a round tip Dremel. And I'm going to basically. Second one came out. Now the main one. And the main one has actually the top part came out. So this is what it looks like uh, without the front furl of the top hand guard. Okay. And the three rivets, pretty tiny rivets. You cannot use them, reuse them afterwards. So you basically have to check them out. Okay, now I'm going to start working on the top part of the handguard and to make room for the OEM top handguard. Um, I had to remove this part. Okay, remember we're setting our our uh, quad rail lower, so we need to make some room for it, and we need to remove this part right here and this part right here, and this is how we do it. We just get uh, a Dremel. And we just basically slice those two pieces off.
Okay, let's see if we can snap that off. Yes, I can. So I have to do a lot of cutting. There, I just snapped that off. Okay, I have to clean that up, but basically that's it for the front part. And I'm going to do the back part. Also need to make a sleeve made out of steel and you can get this from any uh, hardware store and as long as it fits over the uh, screw you're good to go all right now it's a bit long I'm gonna have to shorten this so uh, I'm gonna have to use a Dremel and here we go Okay, it's pretty hot, so basically that's just a tube now, and it will fit over the uh, screw. Okay, now that uh, it's been cut and cooled, now I'm going to, you know, smoothen out the edges and straighten it out too, so I'm just going to use the Dremel. I'm just going to use the back of the Dremel. Okay, I'm done. Now I'm going to reassemble all these parts together. I'm going to talk briefly what I did. And the first thing I put in is this L-shape bent screw from a 1032 3 inch long. I bent it uh, one side is about 30 millimeter and the other side is about 35 millimeter and I put a pair of nuts on either end and I tightened against each other and these uh, nuts are supposed to prevent it from going any further when you start locking in but before you start putting Loctite and all that stuff make sure that is the location you want to do it before you do that. So I already have done that so I'm gonna put that into the quad furl right there and if you remember the reason why I made the sleeve is because the hole is very close to the uh, this uh, top part the band and I couldn't put a nut in there so I put a sleeve in there so the sleeve goes in next then I put in a washer, locking washer, and now I'm going to put in a nut, and I decide to get the acorn nut because it looks nicer. Now, I haven't painted these black yet. It's only because I want you to see what I've done. If I painted black, it would be difficult for you to see it. Okay, so now I'm going to tighten this up. Okay, so this is what it looks like, and those two nuts that's inside is preventing the, uh, the thread to go out uh, any further as this tightens, uh, the acorn nut tightens that uh, quite firmly. So now the next thing that goes on is the lower quad, lower part of the quad. And if you remember, the mod that was done to this is very minimal 
what I did is basically put a bevel on either side of this uh, bridge, this U-shaped -shape, U bridge here, same thing there. And I don't need to paint that, I just leave it as it is. And that's all I did, the mod I did that. And then I drilled two holes, one's a six millimeter, one's about five millimeter, but I did give you imperial measurements. And I also made a little bit of room, a cup, cut a little bit of that edge of the, uh, the rails so I could fit in a locking washer. Okay. So, this goes on simply by just slipping it in, okay, like that, putting the locking washer, and then the M6, this was originally 35 millimeter long, it's an M6 by um, 0.75, and originally was 35 millimeter and it's been cut down to about 27 28 millimeter okay okay so now I'm gonna put that in I have to use a an Allen wrench that started Okay, like a little snug, not too tight. Now, when you drill a hole at the lower part of this quad, it's important you locate it properly. Okay, and I'll show you why. You need to have a five millimeter gap between the receiver and the edge of this. Okay, there should be a gap of about five millimeter. So, next thing I'm going to do is put this washer in, and then I'll put in the acorn nut. Oh, nice and snug. This thing is not going anywhere. All right. Now, next thing I do is I'm going to show you what I did with the removal of the wooden top handguard. Okay. To move the floor furl, and there was three rivets. I just punched them out after I drilled the, the bottom of it. And this is what it looks like uh, without the wooden uh, top hand guard. And it just slips in like this. Okay, just slips back in like that. Like that. Now, remember I said it's important that you have a five millimeter gap between the receiver and the quad. And the reason why is that you gotta make room for this. If you had this too far towards the receiver, too close to the receiver, you would not be able to put this back furl, handguard furl, in there. So that's why it's important you have that. Okay, now the next thing you do is put the top part of the quad in. Now this is where most of the work was done. As you know, I removed uh, the two, the bridge that was back here and in the front here this whole front part was removed and then i had to grind a little bit more to make sure it doesn't press down on this uh this um i guess uh, gas uh, it's not really a tube but uh, the gas uh, part and that's basically what it looks like okay now now uh, here, 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 this is what it looks like. It goes right there, and it there is a one millimeter spread between the original gas uh, uh, tube, I guess you'd call it, gas tube, 
and the top part of the quad. And now you put in the four screws. That's uh, Okay, now let me feel if it wobbles, it does not. And I made ensure that the, um, there is a one millimeter gap between the top rail and the original uh, gas tube. So um, make sure of that and I'll put in the red dot. Okay, and there, that's what it looks like. Oh, let me put the mag in. Looks pretty darn good. Thank you very much for joining me, and please subscribe.